everyone, this is Celine from Blue Kyla Patterns. Welcome to video five for the Celosia crossbody bag. This is the final video where we're going to do the final assembly of the bag and our adjustable strap. Um, so in the last video, we started marking the centers. Uh, we marked all the centers on our gusset. Um, so this video, we're just going to mark the centers on the four panels that we've made so far, the two lining panels and the two exterior panels. And you should be using the pattern piece to do this because, uh, because the curves around the corners are not perfectly, they're not all the same, so we can't just fold in halves and mark centers. So we're actually going to use the pattern piece as a guide and you're going to be making these marks on the wrong side of all four pieces. Okay, so I'm not gonna make you watch all four. I'm gonna pause, I will uh, make the marks on the last two pieces. Okay, so now we're going to start attaching these panels to the gusset. Start by flipping your gusset so that both the lining and the exterior are wrong side out and then they're joined at the middle here with the zipper panel. Always, always start by attaching a lining panel. And the reason why you want to do that is because uh, there's more structure to the exterior and the lining is a little bit more, has a little bit more give. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you start by attaching the um, exterior first, I find it a little bit more difficult to attach the lining panels. So what we're gonna do first, like we do for every bag, is clipping the centers. So you have four centers that you should be clipping to the four center marks on the gusset lining. And it looks like I forgot to do my center marks. I sure did. All right, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna finish my centers. Actually, I'll show you how I going to do the centers. Just going to, actually you just line up these center marks. Whew, it's been a long day already. And then you're making marks. So you're, you're lining up the center marks that you made at the top and the bottom. And you're then making them on each side. So you're flattening that loop to make the marks. serves me right for not reading. And I better do these, make put these center marks in place for the exterior before I attach the lining. Otherwise, it's gonna be much too difficult. So, lining my centers and flattening. centers marked. Okay, try this again. Oh, one thing I should note is that you want to open up your zipper part way. If you attach all your four panels without opening the zipper, when it comes to turning your bag, you're going to be a little bit upset. Now, I find it easier to attach panels to, I don't know why, I think it's because the 
Uh, the fabrics are more stable because of the foam, but I do find the exterior panels always easier to attach to a gusset like this. Whereas the, if I'm going to have puckers, it's usually going to end up being on the lining because even though there's interfacing, there is still a little bit of, of stretch. So now we're clipping the rest in between the center marks all the way around. And because you have this attached, it is a little bit little bit trickier but the key is to just take your time and use a lot of clips so when you get to the corners you have to ease it in use a lot of clips around the corners and these bottom corners Usually what I'll do is I'll clip a little bit of fabric in the seam within the seam allowance and that usually makes easing it into corners a little bit easier. So I'm going to show you this is the top rounded corner which is easier to, to clip and then the bottom corner is the one that is a little bit trickier because it has a sharper corner. But once I've shown you how to do two, you'll know how to do it for the rest of the, the remaining three panels. Now, when this is all clipped, there's a little bit of a difference in seam allowance. So actually it fits quite nicely. I got lucky, but I'm still gonna add a lot of clips because like I said, I find the lining usually a little bit trickier to sew. Okay, so I'll pause, I'll finish clipping, and then I'll explain to you how I want the seam allowance to be a little bit different on the lining pieces than the exterior pieces. Okay, so the, uh, the panel has been clipped completely. Lots and lots of clips when you're getting around the corners. Um, I didn't have really have to do much easing in uh, at the corners, so I'm pretty happy with that. Everything seemed to fit pretty nicely. Um, now, when you're sewing the lining panel, so this isn't the exterior, when you're sewing the lining panels to the gusset, I would like you to use a, a bigger seam allowance than the regular 3 eighths of an inch. And the reason why we want to use a smaller seam allowance is because we are putting the lining inside the exterior shell. The exterior shell has foam interfacing, so it will take up some of the space inside. And this way here, your lining won't be baggy inside of the exterior shell. So you can start and try with a half inch seam allowance, but depending also on how maybe your foam is a little bit thicker, you're going to want to maybe go up to 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you're going to go over to your machine, so all the way around. You'll have to experiment and see which way you like sewing. So if you like it with the lining panel facing up on the bed of your machine and turning this way, or if you like to sew it this way. Um, everybody has a different preference, so you can try sewing one way uh, for one side and then a different way for the other side and then pick what, whatever, whichever method is your, your favorite. So I'm going to go over to the machine now and I'll sew these together. Alright, so the first uh, lining panel is attached to the gusset. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So this is what it looks like here. I'm going to trim my seam allowances, but I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to actually wait until I have um, all four panels attached and then I'll, I'll trim my seam allowance. I'm also going to show you how to tack the lining. So attaching the remaining panels is pretty much the same thing. I will show you when I'm attaching one of them what it looks like once it's attached, just so you can see. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit strange here because we have to push this up so that we can get the shape of the panel, but it's it's totally doable. It's There's nothing um, super awkward about it. So I'm gonna attach the second lining panel and then I'll clip one of them on and I'll just show you how I've pushed the lining in to do it. Okay, so I've clipped one exterior panel. Like I mentioned, I was going to show you what that looked like. Another thing that I did was I opened my zipper all the way. Um, that way there, it was easier to push the lining out of the way and uh, shape the gusset to the, the shape of the panel. 
Another thing you'll want to pay attention to is where your zipper pulls are. So I'm attaching the one that has the front pocket and my zipper pull is here, but I also wanted my main zipper to be have the pull at the same end. You can put it where whichever way you want, either at the same end or the opposite end, but when it's closed, my pulls will both be at the same end of the bag. If you decided to do a double pull zipper, that's not really an issue. It'll look the same either way. So uh, another thing is if you've used piping, you want to sew where you can see the basting stitches of your piping. So if you see close up here, there's my zigzag stitch for the foam. And then that other line of stitching, that's my basting stitches for my piping. Now, to make sure that you're uh, attaching the piping properly, you want to be sewing and making sure that you're always sewing on the inside of that line of basting stitches because um, that is about a quarter inch seam allowance and we're sewing at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I take my time when I'm sewing a bag that has piping. I, I sew once and then I sort of flip it out and I look at my piping all the way around and then if there are areas where I need to sew a little bit closer to the cording of the piping so that the tape portion doesn't show then I'll go back and I'll touch up those those areas. So I'm going to go over to the machine and I'll attach my exterior panel. Okay so the first panel is attached and I haven't looked at my piping yet. I thought I would show you how I do this. So. I flip it and I look for two things. I look for areas where I can see the basting stitching on the piping itself. That's That means I did not sew close enough to the piping cord. And then I look at air, for areas where I maybe uh, went a little bit too close and I've sewn over the piping. So, so here I went a little bit too close and I've actually sewn into the cording. So I'm going to undo this corner and redo it. But I think I'm pretty happy with the rest. It looks okay. So I'm just going to flip this back and I'll undo the stitching just around this corner and then I'm going to use um, a slightly smaller seam allowance around this corner. Okay, so I undid the seam and I redid this corner and now I'm pretty happy with it. I think that looks okay. So now the last thing we're going to do is attach the last panel to the bag. Of course, now I've all messed it up by flipping it. Okay, all right. So now I'm going to just attach this one and then um, I will show you how to tack uh, some of the seams. Okay, both exteriors and both linings attach. I know what you're thinking. This looks very strange. Okay, so first what we're going to do now is we're going to trim our seam allowance. Now, be very careful. Do not take away too much. I actually leave it a little bit longer because, as I mentioned, I want to, I want to tack the lining and the exterior together within the seam allowance. So I'm not trimming too, too much. And just be careful because you don't want to cut your lining while you're trimming. This is incredibly boring, I know. So I'm going to do the same for the other exterior. Now, I'm just going to trim this one lining panel so that I can show you what I mean by tacking. And I'm going to be very careful trimming because I don't want to cut the wrong thing or cut a little bit too much and get close to my stitches. Start 
Sorry, also very boring. I apologize. But we're nearly done. Okay, so I'm just going to finish trimming this one lining panel. And I'll show you how to tack the tops together and then you can go ahead and repeat it for the other side. It's actually really easy to do this and it stops the lining from sort of uh, falling at the top edges. Okay. So what we'll do, and I want to make sure that we're so what you're going to do is you're just going to basically you're going to sew these top two pieces together so the exterior and the lining you're sewing them together just along these top edges but in the seam allowance don't go 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 in further than the seam allowance and you don't want to go too far down as well um, and what that will do is when you turn the bag right side out and I'll show you that uh, later when we turn it it just keeps the the lining shell stuck to the top of the exterior shell when your bag is turned right side out so if you put heavy things in your pockets it won't be uh, your lining won't kind of fall into the bag now normally I would have clips and just clip this and then sew it but I left my clips at the machine anyways I'm gonna go sew these together within the seam allowance Okay, seam allowance is all trimmed and I've tacked the top edges here on both sides. So now it's time to turn our bag right side out. And you do that through the hole in your zipper pocket. I always get nervous turning the bag because I don't know how many times I've turned a bag the entire way and then discovered a very very serious flaw. Okay, push this out. So now what I usually do is I stuff the bag and I give it a good press. I buy these rolls of uh, craft, rather brown craft paper and I really stuff them really well and then I give them a good press. Okay, so the last thing, here's our pocket. Um, the last thing we need to do is uh, sew shut the, the bottom of our zipper pocket. So now you see how this is attached and the weight of items in your pocket won't pull down on the lining okay so that's one of the benefits of tacking you can actually um, go an extra step and do it with the lining but you'd have to do it by hand and you would pass uh, so you basically just I would just do the bottom corners but you could do all the way if you like it would take you a little while you have to do it by hand and you pass the needle really right through the seam and then out the seam here and then you do that a few times and that would tack your corners. So if you want to go ahead and go that extra step. Now I'm just going to pull out the bottom of my zipper pocket. And again, I forgot my clips. Um, so just pin it or clip it shut and then go over to your machine and sew the bottom of the pocket shut. And I try to sew as close as I can get to the edge but making sure that I'm sewing through all the layers so that there's no hole at the bottom of my zipper pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then I'll get my adjustable strap. That's the last step of the bag. Okay, so we all have, we only have to do our crossbody strap. So I need to join two pieces to make the right length. There's a couple of ways that you can join pieces of strap. You can just join them straight like this. Um, or if you are worried about bulk at that join seam, you can actually, uh, this is exactly how you would do strips of, of binding. So you would join them on the diagonal and find my ruler. So you draw a line from one corner to the other corner. Oops, my finger 
fingers in the way. And then you sew across this way and then you would have a diagonal seam which tends to be a little bit less bulky in straps. So I'm going to join it on the diagonal. Okay, so I've sewn these together on the diagonal and now I'm just going to trim away this corners. And then I'm going to press this open. If you want, you can top stitch on both sides, but I tend to not do that for a strap. Okay, now what we need to do is start by pressing in the shorter ends towards the wrong side. Um, about half an inch, I guess. Maybe less. Doesn't really matter. Don't mind my scraps. I'm trying to use up little pieces of usable interfacing because I have several bags full. Okay, so once the ends are pressed in, then we're just going to fold the strap in half, wrong sides together, along the entire length. Now here's where I sort of miss having a full-size ironing board here for the camera because Pressing straps on a tiny mat is, it takes a little bit longer. One of the tricky things too is that I should probably remove my, my other cutting mat because you shouldn't really uh, get steam on those because they will warp. Although I have warped one before and then I just ironed it again and put a lot of heavy books all over it and it was good as new. Just in case you ever make that kind of mistake. Like me. Okay, so once you've pressed it in half, you're going to open the strap piece and you'll see that, that crease in the middle. Now we're going to press both halves in towards the center. Wrong sides together. So you have those raw edges meeting at the center. So I'm going to pause. I'm going to finish pressing those all the along the entire length. Okay, when you've pressed both towards the middle, then you're just going to fold it again in half along that original crease. And you're going to do that the entire way. iron is so hot. It's crazy. It has it goes up to a, a linen setting which is so incredibly hot. Okay so now we look we have what looks like a strap. All we have to do is sew it. So I'm gonna go over to the machine and I'm going to sew all the way around with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so the strap is done. Now we're going to take one end and pass it through our rectangle slide and wrap it around that middle bar. And now you could do whatever you want. You can sew it. I usually sew with a little uh, square box of stitching and then sometimes I set a rivet in the middle. If you feel like your strap is too thick and your machine might not sew it, but you're comfortable with rivets, you can just uh, use rivets if you like. You might want to set two just to make it extra secure. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and sew mine with a little uh, square box of stitching. Okay, so I have my rectangle slide. Now I'm going to take my bag, which is heavy because I stuffed it with towels for, for pressing. So you're going to take the opposite end 
make sure that your strap isn't isn't twisted so uh, you want the little bit of strap sticking up this way and you pass your strap through one rectangle ring and then you making sure it's not twisted okay you pass it through the slide again And then you just pass it through the second rectangle slide and then you go to your machine and you attach it again. So I'm going to once again sew with a little square box of stitching. But I think I'm going to unstuff it first because it's a little bit awkward. And that is it. Your bag is done.